welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan and I host this round the cauldron thing. Today I have on the show Chris from By Hammer and Anvil and we are going to be talking about our work with Bridget. So hello Chris, thank you for joining me here today. Um, would you like to go ahead and give a little bit of an introduction about yourself, who you are, what you do, whatever you want to talk about? Sure. And thank you for having me here. Yeah. Really enjoy being here. Um, I'm, well, my name is Chris, and I am a hard polytheist Celtic pagan. I do work with Bridget and the Morrigan, but we're here to talk about Bridget. Um, and I, as a hobby, I'm a blacksmith, and that's how I work with her. And I'm a professional truck driver, so that takes me away from my hobby a lot. But when I am home, like now, I'm usually out in the shop. That's really cool. Thank you. So um, we are here to talk about Bridget. How did you find her or how did she find you? Because I find that to be the case most often. It's Yeah. Um, and I thought I found her. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, she found me long before I knew what pagan was. And the way I remember finding her, because there's actually two parts of the story, I remember finding her by about Samhain of 2016, or about. Um, I, at this point, had been Christian by default for about, let's see, 2016, and I had just kind of stopped going to church around 2001. So that whole time, I just kind of considered myself Christian by default, but not really Christian. Um, my, I was raised by my dad to be Episcopalian. Uh, he was actually the, the pastor. So I, I'm a preacher's kid. Episcopalians are pretty chill about things, so there wasn't a whole lot of bad mouthing about other religions. It was just they were focused on doing what they do. Mm -hmm. It never appealed to me. And when I joined the military, I just kind of stopped with the whole church thing. And got out in 2007. And really just kind of went about my business with no mind to spirituality whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I was, I guess you could call it apathetic. Right, like you sort of just didn't care? Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't care. It wasn't really on my radar. And um, in 2016, at this point, I had never, I had just discovered what Google, what YouTube was. And I hadn't really did, did much of a search. So people talk about, oh, I you know, you can't trust the uh, YouTube because the algorithm. Mm -hmm. That's not a sign. And I agree. The only thing I ever watched was uh, people playing video games on YouTube. Well, I dropped my remote and Laura Dalligan's video about Bridget came up. Hmm. I went, okay, she's neat. And I got curious about who this, this goddess was because I'd never known what paganism was. Mm -hmm. And then I learned that she's, oh, she's a goddess of fire. Well, that's cool. Usually they're gods, right? All the Greek myths say they're gods of fire. That's right. neat. Wait, she's a blacksmith? Yeah. Well, you're just breaking all the gender barriers, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was a welder in the military mm -hmm. and always had been. So working with iron and fire, there's really never been a point in my life where I haven't. And... I had already been planning on taking up the hobby of blacksmithing. So that became a devotional hobby to her. And um, and I started to notice in my attitude towards the LGBTQ um, that whole community mm -hmm. slowly began to shift. I was kind of a piece of crap. Um I was because of a breakup I had with somebody who decided they were gay. Mm -hmm. And that struck a chord with me. And so I kind of 
I'm ashamed of it. But at the same time, if it hadn't happened, I might not have found her. Uh, right. Her being Bridget. Mm -hmm. And she pulled me out of the alt-right rabbit hole by the bootstraps and really she wasn't gentle yeah um i actually spent a long period of time um the the results of things that happened after the breakup um i lost all interest in dating i lost all interest in women i didn't really want to be friends with women i didn't want anything to do with it it was a hard breakup and it reminded me of um of the uh my dad's second wife who did the same thing but they remained friends because my dad has a much better attitude towards it than i did at the time and i didn't want to be i love my dad but i want to be my dad right and that that really hit on a lot of shadows and it opened up a lot of shadow wounds and I actually spent about six to seven years believing that I was asexual because everything shut down. Mm -hmm. I didn't want anything to do with any of that, any of the dating thing. Mm -hmm. And during that period, I kind of learned my lesson. Um, I would never have done anything physically to anybody, but my attitude towards it sucked. Mm -hmm. And... You've grown, though. It's, I think that's, yeah. that's kind of the, the, the point of it. Yeah, and the reason I grew is because I kind of got a taste of my own medicine. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that I was asexual. I came out to my family as asexual. This was accepted, but kind of like no one understood it. Nobody wanted to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to pretend it didn't exist. Yeah. And I see that as a lesson from Bridget. She was giving me a taste of my own medicine. Yeah. She is very very uh not always gentle with the lessons. no well <laughs> no and I, I i i i deserved it but at the same time i'm glad it happened i'm glad she did it that way because now i actually know a lot more about the asexual community mm -hmm. and i understand some of the terms i never really heard before so right. having done research on it i kind of understand it a little bit now i come to the understanding now that no that's not actually true i was just going through a state of depression mm -hmm. well i can't call it depression that's a clinical term but i was going through a state the, there's, a, there's a term that i learned recently in a book <clears throat> that i'm reading called wintering you are wintering probably <laughs> i would call it that yeah you can call it that i kind of like that Kind of like a like that a period works. of stagnation and uh, really deep reflection. It's not necessarily depression, but right, it is very almost empty. Well, um, I, I didn't know at the time it was shadow work. Yeah, yeah. So she she forced that on me. Yes, she's very big, very big on the oh, shadow yeah. work. And with me, it was, it was. I mean. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't realize it at first. And I think I've talked about this before, um, about starting to honor her and worship her and pray to her. And then all of a sudden, like everything just got flipped upside down. And I was oh, yeah. starting like being confronted with all of these internal things that I didn't really recognize before. And <laughs> I'm like, what the heck is going on? Add on to the fact that, you know, we're in a pandemic and things are just generally yeah. hard for people. But then uh, I was in a conversation in a Discord community that I'm in, and I was talking about it, and someone was like, well, she's not a goddess of the forge for nothing. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, it finally clicked in my head. You can't shape steel without hitting it. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so, yeah, shadow work is definitely a very large aspect of my work with her. Mm -hmm. um, and so obviously shadow work is a very large aspect of your work with her too, correct? Oh, yeah. Whether I want it to be or not. Right. And so in my experience, um, she she has a tendency to not be gentle, but it's more of, 
I guess I relate to it more as like a motherly tough love sort of thing. Like we're going to do this thing because you need to do this thing. Even if you don't want to, it's good for you and it's going to benefit you and you're going to grow from it. So as someone with um, depression and anxiety and mental illness, I have found that sometimes it's like right in my face. Yes, we're going to do this and we're going to work through this. But when I start to go through those periods of being depressed or just being low she sort of like backs off like she's still there and she's like hey this is still a thing that we need to work on but I know that I can't necessarily push you through it right now so it's sort of like a almost like a mom but not in the coddling cooing over the baby type of way more of a like you need to learn these lessons type of way yeah that sounds right for probably most everybody that really sees her shadow work side mm-hmm. um because i'm ex-military i see her more as a drill sergeant okay they do have your best interest in mind mm-hmm. you're not gonna like how they do it yeah i think that makes sense if, i mean i've never been in the military my dad was in the marines so mm-hmm. i guess I've i've heard stories of drill sergeants before but <laughs> you know i don't have any personal experience with it so i I can't speak to that. <laughs> she can be. She can't now. I, that being said, yes, she absolutely can be a gentle, kind, nurturing goddess. She has the capacity to do both equally well. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't put up with your bullshit. Yeah, no, for sure. And and what's interesting to me, and it's something that just popped into my head, is that she is... Um, three aspects or depending Mm -hmm. on how you view her and the mythology she is not one goddess she is three right um so i i want to let people know too that are listening that depending on which aspect you see of bridget your experience is going to be different oh yeah Um, i know someone who works very closely with her who is a writer and she writes books and she Mm. writes fiction. So the aspects of Bridget that I think she sees or um, experiences are more of the creative side, the poet, um, because yeah, yeah, the poet, the the, um, muse isn't the right word, but yeah, the poet. Um, Mm. Yeah. So just throwing that out there for anybody that's listening or Mm. watching that um, there are different aspects to Bridget, depending on how you see her, either one goddess with three aspects or as three sisters. Um, The mythology isn't entirely clear, I don't think. It's it's not at all clear. (laughs) (laughs) It's really not. It's clear as mud. And she has more names than any other goddess that I know of um, in Celtic mythology, with the possible exception of the Morrigan. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah there's there's a lot um so you said that you do blacksmithing in, as a devotion to her um yes. are there any other sort of ways that you work with her or um, um let's let's define y- the term that you use because sometimes i say work with sometimes i say worship um i do pray I, to her what terms do you use how do you view that for my purposes like within my own practice, worship and working with are one and the same. Okay, okay, that's kind of how I view it as well. Yeah, but I like now. I understand a lot of people, especially in the pagan community, they kind of shy away from the word worship mm-hmm. because of where where a lot of us came from. The it same. has certain connotations, so I understand. I don't agree with that, but I understand it. Right. Yeah, that's actually um, something I plan on talking about soon. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I would say I work with Bridget. <sighs> She's usually the one I call to if I feel like I need help with um, with any any type of witchcraft that I feel like I need to call on deity. I nine times out of ten will call on Bridget, unless it is something that is meant to be protective by means of concealment then i would definitely call in the morgue okay um now, do you have any sort of daily worship practice do you have candles um, or anything that you're comfortable oh, sharing yeah i do but it's not standard because i live and work in a 18 wheeler right so having an open flame in an 18-wheeler while you're going down the road, probably not a good idea. Yeah, very much so. I'm so, very familiar with the inside of those. 
um, the uh, so what I'd done instead is in 2016, my first in bulk, I pulled into a Walmart and I picked up a pack of pipe cleaners. Okay. And I made her made her bridges cross. Bridges cross. And that stays above the windshield right here. And um, there's a cubby hole above the windshield visor on an 18 wheeler. You've seen inside and you probably know what I'm talking about. My dad has driven truck for as long as I can remember. I used to go with him during the summers when I was out of school. <laughs> I am very familiar with the inside of a semi. That, that gets clipped above the windshield with, a, okay. with a, one of those pins. And every morning and every night when I pull the brakes, I, um, one of the things, one of the devotions I do is I just kiss my hand to the bridge cross and tell her, thank you for getting me to where I'm going safely or please watch over me or whatnot. And that's about as much as I can do mm -hmm. because of the, the tight quarters in the rig. Right. But I think that's still I, a beautiful practice. Well, thank you. You're welcome. So how did you end up taking up blacksmithing and using that as a devotional practice to Bridget? Uh, well, I started with witchcraft and had no idea where to start. So I decided to start using something I knew as a foundation. And what I know is steel. Mm -hmm. um, because of my time in the military, I spent as a welder and ship fitter. I understand how steel works to a some degree. So I started studying metallurgy and I started just you know, I, got, I bought the forge, the anvil, the hammer, and some tongs, and I just started messing with it and screwing around with it. And, of course, right around the time when I got to the point where I wanted to seek out a mentor, COVID hit. So it's been me. Um, torturing iron <laughs> in order to see how it, how it behaves under the hammer because I don't have anybody to teach me. Right. I'd love to seek out a mentor, but we can't right now. Right. And I think maybe Bridget did that timing somewhat deliberately. She wanted me to figure out the basics. Um, or maybe it was just bad timing. I can't say for sure, but right. Yeah. We can never we can never know for sure, but it is uh oh, there's a word I'm looking for. Uncanny the timing. Yeah. That is a good word for it. <laughs> that is a good word for it. So I've been working, yeah. I've been blacksmithing for about two years. And right around the time I go, okay, I'm starting to know enough to be dangerous. Maybe I should get a mentor. No, no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually have a knife that you made. Um, you do. That is still going strong. It oh, good. hasn't fallen apart like you were worried about because oh, it was good. The banana knife is still in one chiffon piece. Yes. Yes, it is. It's still going strong. I don't have it up here because it's currently in the kitchen and I need to clean it. But um, yeah, no, I love it. I think it's a fantastic piece of work. Good. I'm glad it actually works. And I was worried that the weird curve on that blade would like not let you cut anything. Oh, no, so, it works. Because the blade I've had on before, I was much happier with. And then I overheated it in the quench and it just shattered completely i was like oh and it looked so good too it's okay that was entirely my fault but that's all right the one i have works and uh yeah so you did that experiment with um you used the plastic bags as i don't know the proper term but you use the plastic bags to help make the handle right yeah they are the spacers yes that's the right word in between the uh the purple heart handle scales yeah that's what kind of wood that is by the way and um i had found online these little things are supposed to be like the texas star i was like yeah no that's a pentacle <laughs> every time i drive by houses with those on i'm like mm, i see you <laughs> you don't know what you're doing <laughs> yeah i go into texas and the first the first trucks the first rest area there has a giant Texas star. I was like, yeah, you know what that is. Yeah. You don't know what that is, but I do. I think it's funny. And they're so right-wing <laughs> Christian. That's like if you knew what that was. Yeah, very much so. Um, so I was thinking while I was getting all of this set up, um, mm -hmm. 
Do you view your job as a truck driver as part of a devotion to Bridget because I, of her like uh like philanthropic background, not necessarily as a pagan goddess, but as a Catholic saint? Because I view them um, as like one and the same. I see them as the same. Yeah, I, I her stories of being a saint. I strongly suspect those are captured stories from being a pagan and they've been converted to her saint. So I I take them in as information about Bridget. Mm -hmm. I recognize and acknowledge that that is now a part of her mythos. Mm -hmm. But I've also come across evidence that suggests that she has been worshipped as a goddess since the Neolithic Stone Age. Right, yeah. So <laughs> I... I I don't really give the Catholics too much credit. <laughs> they, they, if she's sacred to them, great. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell them they can't, you know, honor her if they want to, but I don't believe she's a saint. I see her as a triple goddess personally, but there are others who would disagree and that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to tell anybody what, how, what, what to believe. Right. So, um, and as for my trucking, I loathe and despise the trucking industry. It is a means of putting money away so that I can start my own business as a professional blacksmith. And that's all it is to me. Okay. That makes sense. I, but, I have seen the, the goods and the bads of the trucking industry. And most of the time it's, it's the bads, but I also do recognize <laughs> that it's a, it's a vital industry. Uh, yeah and there's guys out there the who country. would never do there's guys out there who wouldn't do anything else yeah and good on them they can have it <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want it anymore but i have to do it for a couple more years until i can get a startup startup business going well that's good um so we were talking before we started recording about mm -hmm. um male pagans and i mm -hmm. I believe that you might have a different experience, I guess, um, working with Bridget or finding Bridget because, you know, I am a woman and most of the content creators around paganism online in the Celtic sphere are women. Oh, yeah. So, especially within the Celtic sphere. Yeah. I mean, I can't speak with like heathenry because I typically see men as the face of heathenry. Yeah. Um, do you have any sort of different experience or um, anything that you might think is different between um, being seen as someone who worships Bridget as a woman versus anybody who worships Bridget as a man? I, you know, I haven't been publicly like in person um, around paganism. I've never actually been able to go to a pagan festival. Mm -hmm. or pagan pride or anything like that i would right. love to but like right now we can't um as soon as we're able to i'm going to i don't have a whole lot of experience in person all of my experience with the pagan community is online mm -hmm. um and online the primary difference is that people who want to engage in the aesthetics of it because that's a legitimate part of my of, of a witchcraft practice if you use say glamour magic as part of your practice that's legitimate right there's not a whole lot of options for straight men in that field um while the pagan community probably wouldn't judge somebody if they wanted to put on that if he wanted to put on mascara that doesn't really appeal to me or a lot of other straight guys because it's just not something we really want to do. Right. Not because I think it's unmanly, but because I don't you're care. Just, yeah. You're yeah. Just not interested. Right. Uh, if somebody wants to wear mascara or eyeliner and he wants, and he's, even if he's straight or he could be whatever, I don't care. Fine. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. This is America. You can do what you damn well, please. Mm -hmm. In theory. In theory, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, on paper, you can do what you damn well please. Right. Um, if you're in, you know, southern Alabama, maybe don't. Yeah. <laughs> but, 
well, certain places around the country would not care at all. So others would care a lot. Right. There's definitely been some hesitation because they don't they don't trust my motivations because okay. I'm a straight male. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe I'm one of these, you know, creepy guys that people warn them about. And the reason they left Christianity is so because it's more women centered and okay. And they don't want to deal with the patriarchy. This is this happened a lot with people who are very much um have gone to the most ridiculous extreme with the feminism within paganism. Okay. That and sense. that is not very common. Right. Like for the vast most part, it's been fairly welcoming. Um, but I have I've I have had dealt with the, the issue of people not believing I'm a witch. Hmm. Because because of your because I'm a man presentation yeah. because you're a man, yep. Huh. Um, I ignore them. Well, that's good. I would ignore <laughs> I mean, them too. <laughs> yeah. Um. If and if you're gonna be that way, fine. Um. I, my whole for reason most, for go ahead. For the for the vast the vast majority of people are actually very welcome. That's really and good to hear. More so within paganism than any other religion that I've experienced. Good, good. Uh, my whole reasoning, I guess, for exploring that line of thought is because mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that everyone listening or watching knows that Bridget is not, uh, she does not discriminate. Oh, and, no. and uh, we are welcoming, I guess in the pagan community as long as you are welcoming as well you know so i i wanted to make sure that there were no perceived barriers there for anyone else listening i know that in the community there are some people um some communities some traditions who are very staunchly anti-male but mm -hmm. like you said it is not the majority and right. um, it's something that I think we we need to work on. But that is an entirely different topic. <laughs> That's a whole other ball of wax. Yes. Yeah, and it does exist. And there are there is there is the occasional, and I have to stress that it does not happen often. Right. But there is the occasional turning their nose up because I'm male. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, that Instagram. Just my mind. Well, Instagram is is kind of a dumping ground for that kind of nonsense. Yeah. So um, on on YouTube, like my channel, the people that do watch, they've always left very lovely comments, and it's never been anything negative. In fact, it was always very very nice. And on Facebook, and by and large, Instagram, very very welcoming and polite. But also kind of not really believing that I'm a witch, but maybe I'm a pagan. It's really weird. Those are two different things. The, yeah. <laughs> like, you can be both one, the other, or neither. It doesn't right. really matter. It's just very strange. Like, oh, well, he's definitely a pagan, but I don't know if he's a witch. Like, okay. I, I'm going to go back and, you know, keep doing what I do right, and oh well the other thing hole. is yeah I'm gonna go back to the anvil and <laughs> do my thing and that's the other thing is people don't see I see uh, blacksmithing and witchcraft as one and the same so I consider okay. smithcraft and witchcraft um you are taking one thing okay you're taking this mm -hmm. and you are turning it into this Okay, can you describe that what is that a, is for the people listening to the podcast? Okay, this is a, a blank for um, a knife. It's going to be um, sort of a uh, kitchen knife. Mm -hmm. It started off with something like this, which is a square piece of stock steel. Okay. When you work with steel, uh, this high carbon steel, um, what you're physically doing is you are changing it from one material into another. Mm -hmm. it is starting off in an annealed state which is as soft as it can get okay 
uh, and it's steel, so soft is relative. Right. But you are then using heat from the forge and uh, skill at the anvil to com not completely change not only its physical shape and appearance, but you're also changing it on a, um, a microscopic level. Okay. Once you've physically shaped it, the next step is a heat a heat treat, or that's when you bring it up to critical temperature and you dunk it in either water or oil. And what that does is that actually physically changes the crystalline structure of the grain within inside the uh, steel. Okay. And at that point, it is physically not the same material. It is still the same iron and carbon content, but the crystalline structure has changed. So in my mind, that that is a form of alchemy mm -hmm. that it's it's a literal interpretation of, of an alchemy process, which is now people don't want to call it that. They want to call it metallurgy, which is a form of science. Well, all science came from metallurgy from alchemy anyway. Or at least in some form. Um, alchemy is a whole other ball of wax. But if there's nothing magical about the process of turning iron into a knife or turn, well, iron in itself is a shape shifter because it can be shaped into it, literally any tool that you want. Mm -hmm. And it can be shaped into a array of different materials by adding different components, different metallurgical ingredients. And it goes from iron to a space-aged modern steel if you do it right. Okay. And it has completely different properties and completely different um, characteristics, mm -hmm. which is science. But I see it as a magical process when you're doing it at the forge. Okay. I think I understand. Right. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not explaining it correctly. <laughs> so. No, you're, I, you're I, okay. I, all right. Well, for, for me anyways, I mean, I don't know anything about what you're doing, but I can see like in my brain, I guess, what you're talking about. And I, <clears throat> excuse me, I do know that steel is a combination of um, other things and mm. I just don't know the technicalities of it. But the way right. that you're explaining it, it makes sense to me. Um. So you kind of see that process of changing one thing into another as yes. the same as yeah. the process of like casting a spell or practicing witchcraft. You're changing something yes. to something else. And you already know how to work still a little bit if you know how to bake bread. What do you mean? So when you have a loaf of bread, when you have a loaf of bread dough, uh -huh. and you flop it down on top of the... Uh, of the cutting board. Okay. You have your you have your uh, rolling pin. If it's a ball of bread dough and you want it to be a long loaf, how would you use your rolling pin well, to make you, it long? You would flatten it out and go in specific directions. Right. If you look at the anvil as your cutting board, the oh. piece of steel as your bread dough, and your hammer as a rolling pin, you control how that steel is shaped in precisely the same manner as you would with a rolling pin and throw a dough of bread. Interesting. I've never thought about it like that because I like to bake bread. Uh, baking bread for me is uh, a, a devotional act uh, because mm -hmm. Bridget is of the fire and the hearth. So Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Now, you also already know why, you also know how to get the impurities out of steel. Why do you need bread? What is the function of it? I don't know. Like kneading. Okay, so it gets the <laughs> air bubbles out of it. Well, I, I think the reason I don't know is because a lot of the times I, I make gluten-free bread and oh. the process is a little different. <laughs> you okay. don't have to knead the dough, typically. <laughs> okay. Well, when you knead the dough for non-gluten-free bread, you're working the air bubbles out. If I understand it correctly, I don't bake bread very often. Mm -hmm. but you need it 
you get the air bubbles out, you fold it over, you get the air bubbles out. When you fold steel and you forge weld it together, if you're using a type of steel that needs to be forge welded, that needs to be folded. What that process is doing is when you flux it and you forge weld it, you're forcing all the impurities out. My brain has just clicked to uh, like a, a similarity between what you're describing and how Bridget works in my life. Right. Me too. Because she's like, okay, you're going to go through this. All right, you're done. All right, here we go. We're going to fold you over and you're going to yeah. do it again. And then we're going to do it again until you have yeah. yourself the way that you need to be. And all those shadows are coming to the surface when you get when when she fluxes the steel yeah and she forge welds it together that flux picks up all the crud and when you hit it with a hammer and it squirts out of the cracks it takes all that impurities out with it the forge as an analogy for shadow work mm -hmm. yeah Like in my head at first, it it made sense, but I hadn't quite connected it until you described it the way that you just described it. So, and I think even your your uh, analogy with the bread, for anybody that doesn't have any idea about uh, the forge and blacksmithing, I think that's a good analogy too. That's a very I good- so. um, I don't make much bread comparison i think no. well i have made bread before that is not gluten-free and i do understand some of the mechanics of it mm. um if bex is watching this video from the witch's cookery she can <laughs> comment below <laughs> <laughs> and let us all know uh the point of kneading your dough because if i have questions i about might baking, misunderstand it yeah if i have I questions about baking and that's who i ask <laughs> <laughs> I might misunderstand why you would need the bread dough, but if I understand it correctly, it's to get certain things out. I, I think so, because you need the dough, then you, you set it somewhere warm and you let it rise. And then when it's done rising, you punch the dough, knead it some more and let it rise again. Mm -hmm. And then you bake it. So it, it might be a similar process. Um, but all of that going back to tying into shadow work, I think is just... It's it's crazy to me. <laughs> and it even works with the bread analogy to a certain degree, if I understand the process correctly, and I may not. Yeah, that's okay. We can't know everything. No. <laughs> so. Um, so I know that you you have the Bridget's Cross in your in your truck. Is there anything that you do when you're home that is not the forge. I know the forge is a very large part of your practice, right. but do you have um, anything similar for like when you wake up or when you go to bed, the same as when you're in your truck? Honestly, no, because I'm not home for very long. I'm only home for four days out of the month. Oh, wow. So yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm, when I'm home, I want to spend as much time as I can with her on the forge. Mm -hmm. And, but on Sabbaths, you know, as long as it's not too freezing cold outside, I will. I do like to have a bonfire and just, you know, have some incense, and occasionally light a candle if I can't do the if I can't do the bonfire. Okay. But beyond that, no, because I'm working with what I know, and I've never had any type of like formal training within, you know, any type of Wiccan or witchcraft tradition. Right, like no, so, no order, no grove, no coven. Right. No, None we're in the same boat. Mm. <laughs> so, and a lot of my, what I do study is has has to do with steel and Celtic mythology, mm -hmm. which. So, go ahead. I still have a lot to learn about the Celtic mythology, but that's it's a lifelong well, process. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it is. Like I, I look at Laura O'Brien and Morgan Daimler and all of the information that they have. Yeah. And that's just from an Irish perspective. Yeah. And, and Courtney like, Weber. Holy, holy crap. Holy cow. And 
and you know they're enmeshed in the culture because that's where they're from um or at least laura o'brien is i know morgan daimler i think was born in the states i'm not sure Um, yeah i'm pretty i'm fairly certain courtney weber was too yeah here in the u.s but and she's the one that wrote actually my favorite book about bridget entitled the same so we'll have to leave a link in the description and the show notes for that um, I'll leave a link to Morgan Daimler's book too, because I'm currently reading through that one. Um, mm. Now, when you're in the forge and you are creating or whatever that you decide to do that day, do you have any like mantras? Do you say any prayers or is it just sort of being mindful of yeah. being out there? Uh, yes. When I'm, when you draw out the steel and make, when you stretch, sorry, when you stretch the steel out, mm-hmm. you know, rolling pin from the left to the right, um, I tend to go in threes, three strikes, and then I roll the steel 90 degrees. Maiden okay. mother chrome, flip. Maiden mother chrome, flip. And it's very simple, and it's sort of like that. Okay. And it, I, <laughs> without the anvil here, I can't really show you. And I, right. there is no Wi-Fi at the forge. No, that's okay. But, you don't so, even have to show us. Um, so you said maiden mother crone. Do you tie Bridget to those aspects? Because I know not I, a lot of people do, um, and I, I generally don't myself. I do because in bulk, <clears throat> she she seems to be a very seasonal goddess mm-hmm. for me. Um, she's always around, right. but like in bulk's coming up. Holy crap, is she around? Right. Um, <laughs> and it stays pretty strong. She stay like I feel her pretty strongly well into like Salon. Mm-hmm. And then the Morgan type sort of takes over. But Bridget's still there. Right. And yeah, I don't not in this, yes, in the sense that she has three aspects. Mm-hmm. But also no, because I don't see her as as necessarily aging. She always looks the same to me if I see her, and that's very rare. Right. But yeah, that's a hard that's a hard question to answer because I know that she is associated with the maiden mother crone aspects. I don't. I don't think historically she is. No, I don't think so. I'll, Maybe I'll not. have to look. Um, I know this that. Right. I know that there are there are um, <coughs> differences between being a triple goddess in a Celtic perspective <coughs> and being a triple mm-hmm. goddess as far as most people see deities here oh, in the states. I think Definitely. it's very, very. Uh, Irish based because there are a lot of triple deities in Irish mythology. I'm not familiar with any other Celtic mythology because that's not really my uh, like my focus. Um, okay. But I I know there are several triple deities, but it's not yeah. necessarily aspects of like the the age cycle. I think that is very that's Wiccan very Wiccan centric. Yeah. That's very Wiccan. Yeah. And you know what? That might be where my confusion is because the first introduction I had to paganism was Wicca. Was Wicca. Like and most some of us. Things and we have, have to go through stuck. a process of unlearning. Some things have gotten stuck. Yep. And and uh there are some people, and I see this too, because in in at least Irish mythology, as far as I'm aware, there are the separation of like planes i guess like you have land sea and sky yeah and a lot of people associate bridget with those three planes and i will have to find the link to someone explained it in um, a facebook group and i could not do it justice if i tried in the way that bridget is tied to those three planes and that she's very liminal very in between oh yeah (laughs) yeah she is and I, I'm, I wonder if anyone else that works with Bridget, um, how they work with their crafts, because you have the forge, I have my fiber arts, like I yeah, crochet, you did it. Um, 
I, I can embroider, I'm, I sew, all kinds of what she would consider, quote unquote, domestic activities. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I couldn't do that to save my butt. I bet you could I if would, you tried. I'll bet you I get my fingers tied inside the weed. <laughs> <laughs> or I'd sew the shirt to my pants or something. <laughs> that, that would be, like, I would be impressed if you did that. That would be tough. I, <laughs> I would not be able to do well I don't have there's a there's a certain level of patience with that that I don't yes. think I'd be able to do it and I've seen what you make it is gorgeous oh well thank you, you really do yeah you, ha you have a talent with it thank you I just I think Bridget tends to latch on to people who not only have a lot of shadows that need to be worked through um, yeah. because that is a big thing for her but mm. I don't know if the correlation is like people with shadows are creative or she just tends to go for both I don't know I think well she's a goddess of skill and 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 not uh, blacksmithing I think is a metaphor and I took it literally mm, but I it's, think it's quite a metaphor no well she's literally the goddess of the forge right but it can also be a metaphor for anybody that uses that that has a skilled trade or skilled hobby that works with their hands. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you, you take one thing and you change it to another. Yeah. And then you also have the metaphor of the forge for the person. Yeah. <laughs> the forge is a metaphor for a lot of things that are almost all shadow work. But, yeah. And um but she's also a warrior goddess, so she she's not what? as a warrior goddess if I read it correctly. Um uh, I'll have to look. I it sounds familiar, but she's I'm not, not nearly as well known as other goddesses for it. Do you know what um what story that's from? Um, there is a story where she is described as wailing above the armies and flying above the armies, screaming and scaring them off. I cannot remember what story that's from. Me neither. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> okay. If I, if I can find the link for that, I'll put it in the description. Yeah, I could be wrong too, but. I'm by no means, by no means an expert. Oh, yeah. No, so. neither am I. Like, I don't ever claim expert status on this whatsoever. No. <laughs> mm. It wasn't using her, na her name that I'm used to, so it might have been, it might have been a reference to a different goddess, actually. I could be very wrong. Okay. Well, that's okay. As long as, you know. If we could figure it out, I'll leave a link. But just anybody listening, no, that could be, that yeah, could be incorrect. Yeah, I could be completely <laughs> off. <laughs> All right, so we're coming up. Oh, it looks like we've passed the 45-minute mark at least. Um, so we can start to wrap this up. I have one last question before mm -hmm. we get into the outro. If you could tell people one thing about working with or honoring or worshiping Bridget, what would it be? Um, if anybody ever tells you you can't because you're male or because you're not Irish or because you're black, Chinese, Japanese, uh, whatever, whatever stupid excuse people want to gatekeep with, tell them to pound sand and ask Bridget. Because she is not going to discriminate. Right. Um, she will tell you if she wants to work with you or not. Um, oh, yeah. She will tell you. Yeah. Yeah. You will know. that experience. <laughs> you will know. Yeah. And if you're doing it wrong, you'll know. Yeah. That's very good advice, I think. All right. So thank you so much, Chris, for joining me on today's Thanks. episode of the podcast and the YouTube channel. Well, thank you very much for having me. I really enjoyed it. I appreciate you having me here. Absolutely. 
I, I always enjoy speaking with other pagans and especially getting different perspectives on people who work with or worship Bridget as well, because it's very interesting how the UPG and the experiences can be similar, but also very different. Yeah, that's actually really true because they're, they are similar, but they're also from very different points of view. Right. Right. So do you want to let everybody know where they can find you on YouTube? Shout out your, your channel name, and I'll leave a link in the description and in the show notes. Sure. Uh, my YouTube channel is uh, Blood, Sweat, and Steel, and my Instagram is By Hammer and By Anvil. That's right. I said it wrong at the beginning, didn't I? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> no worries. All right. Well, everybody go check out Chris's channel, follow him on YouTube and on Instagram and check out his videos. And um, are you available for questions and chatting? And if anybody wants to share their experience with you? Yeah, absolutely. If you want to, if you want to talk to me on the Instagram, that'd be great. That'd be fine. Um, if I don't get back to you, please forgive me. I'm probably rolling down the interstate. Yeah, so, we all have but- lives. I try to answer what I try to, I try to respond at least a little bit with the Instagram. So that's good to know. Um, Everybody, we will talk to you next time. Bye for now. I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much for all of your support. And if you'd like to join me over on Patreon, you can do that at patreon.com slash roundthecauldron where you can get patron exclusive perks and content. And I will talk to you soon.